Hey everyone, let's take a look at the Trace Viewer and how you can run traces of your tests locally and on CI. So in the Playwright config, there's a trace option and it's normally set to on first retry, which we totally recommend. What that means is that when your test fails on the first retry, a trace of your test will be recorded that you can then download and inspect. But what if you wanted to run your traces locally? You can totally do that with the dash dash trace on flag. So let me show you. I have a test here, a demo to do app, and my test is failing here on uh, line 130 in this test describe block, this test is failing. So I wanna figure out what's going on. I wanna run this test and see the trace. And I can do that by using npx play write test, followed by the name of the test file I want to run, because I don't wanna run all tests. And I wanna run the one on 100, uh, line 130. And I'll use the dash dash trace on flag. Now, when I run this test, it's going to go to that describe block and it's going to run all the tests in there. So there's nine tests being run using five workers and it's running the tests on Chromium, WebKit and Firefox. So as you can see, uh, six passed and three failed. And I could go through those error messages, but I'm going to like go straight to the trace viewer. So I'm going to copy this local host here and I'm going to open up in my browser. And this is going to give me the HTML report. So you can see all the tests that were ran from this describe block and you can see which ones passed and which ones failed. Now, again, I can click here to go straight to the trace viewer, or I could also inspect the actual uh, steps of the, the test, which is showing me the errors. And I could, you know, see here, it's, it's literally telling me complete and completed is, you know, what's going wrong there, what's expected and what's received and showing me where in the code, but I wanna see the traces. So I'm gonna like go straight down here and I'm gonna click on the trace. So here's the trace viewer and it's really, really cool. This is a trace of my test and I can use the timeline to hover along and see, you know, what's going on, buy some cheese, what happened next, I checked that off and something went wrong. So this is just the timeline that I can hover back and forth, but I can also hover back and forth over the actions. So you can see I'm buying some cheese, feeding the cat, this is great. And there was my click action and there was what failed. So again, hovering over here, but this is a DOM snapshot. So I can click this and I can focus on this snapshot. So before uh, you can see here, so what what is happening? What is going wrong? And I can't figure it out just by looking at this. So I can look over here at the call, which is telling me the expect failed. Okay, I get that. Um, it's telling me the locator, it's looking for the to do item, the first one, and it's expecting it to have a class with a string of complete and what was received is completed. So again, I can, you know, reach to that log and kind of understand, you know, what was going on here, Ex unexpected value completed. I can have a look at the source code of the test and I can see that on this line, it's expecting the first two to have the class complete. So my test is looking for complete, but my app is saying completed. And I don't know which one is right. So how do I know which one is right? Well, I can dive deeper into this by actually clicking on the DOM snapshot. I'm gonna open this snapshot in a new window. So I've got a bit more space and I'm gonna inspect it. So I'll open up the inspector and I wanna find out this to-do item here. Um, let's have a look at what's going on. So you can see the test ID to do item and I've got the class is completed. So my test is com had complete and the class here is completed and I want to know why. So if I went and changed that class to complete, which is what my test has, and I'm going to see what's happened. So if I have the test of complete, there's no like uh, line there. The CSS has changed and you can see I'll put that D back for completed and you'll see the buy some cheese how that has changed. The color has changed. There's a little kind of line in there that's changed. So I can actually see, yeah, actually my test was wrong and this uh, should have been completed. You know, this is not the kind of styling I want, but I can visually see this and I can play around with it. You know, I can even change the CSS here and change that border to red. Uh, I can uncheck and check and, and kind of really understand what's going on in my test. So that's what the trace viewer can do, which is really, really cool. You can also see the console, if there was any errors there, you can see the network, if there was any requests. You can see the metadata, so you can see it's running on Chromium, is mobile, is false, and uh, you can go through each and every action, and anytime you need to, you can pop that out and inspect that at that particular point in time. 
And then obviously, if you know what you need to do to fix your test, you can go along here, you can um, fix your test, and then you can basically rerun that again. Uh, you can put the trace on flag in case, you know, it was still got an error because I'm pretty much sure that I fixed this, but just in case, I'll keep that trace on. It's going to record that trace locally. Uh, but as you can see, my test passed and I don't need to go and do any more debugging. So that's the trace. You're uh, happy testing, everyone.